Introducing the new Garmin Instinct that is built to withstand a military environment. Fiber reinforced polymer case and bezel, chemically strengthened crystal, using a 128 by 128 PPI monochrome sunlight visible transfective memory in a pixel display. up to 16 hours of GPS, 14 day battery in smart watch mode and switching to low battery consumption in ultra track mode will increase the GPS up to 40 hours. 20 millimeter silicon strap, 45 millimeter width, 15.3 millimeter thickness, weighs in at 52 grams and is 100 meters water resistant. Internal storage of 16 megabytes. There's quite a price difference when compared to the Phoenix 5X Plus. Despite not having all the features from the Phoenix 5X Plus, it does have the most important features that are needed, like barometer, altimeter, accelerometer, GPS with GLONASS and Galileo, weather, controls for your smartphone music, thermometer, find my phone, find my device, and a heart rate monitor, just to mention a few. The display isn't color, but the clarity in all conditions is extreme. It doesn't have built-in maps or downloadable watch faces, apps and widgets, but what it has already built in is by far enough. Even includes the moon phase widget. Because of the compact size, this easily makes it an everyday watch for all activities and environments. Shockproof is something that makes you wear it with confidence and not having to treat it like other smart watches of this level. My main attraction is that sub-dial that just makes it very ingenuitive and clear to know where you are within functions and modes. And while mentioning ingenuitive, I've included my own starter instructions manual, which can be downloaded and the link is in the description along with the timestamps. I will be doing follow up videos, but this will give you the best insight what to expect out of the box. So apart from the watch, what else is in the box? You'll find a safety manual, which I've not read as I like to live on the edge. Also, there's a quick tip manual that teaches you other languages. Included is the charging and sync cable that's built to a high standard. I wanted to start with my thoughts, as I usually cover this at the end of my videos, but have decided that it needs to be mentioned right off the bat. This Garmin is my own watch that I've paid for, so I can say exactly what I like. <sighs> Deep breath. I have to say that this instinct was more than I expected, the GPS speed is just bonkers, leaving all my other GPS devices, apart from my Phoenix 5X Plus, literally for dust. I've had this instinct for two weeks now, taking it into some harsh environments, and I can't find a mark on the case or on the silicon strap. Even the crystal is free from marks for that matter. The feel is a perfect size, and you forget it's there most of the time. The feedback from the buttons is precise and shows no signs of failing. So why have I bought this as well as my Phoenix 5X Plus? It's mainly because of the size and that it has that shockproofing construction. Also, I like how it looks with regards to looking like a proper 
tough watch. So looking at the instructions that I've made, I've included a menu. And on this menu, the very first one is to do with the watch buttons. So out of the box, you'll have a very simple task of setting this up with your chosen language. You also have the option to connect it to your device. And on my instructions, on menu three, I have here the Garmin Connect app. Garmin Connect is available through Android and iOS. And once you have downloaded the app, you'll just need to set up a new account. It's all very simple to follow. And then you just connect this to the watch. And once this is all connected, you'll have a opening screen like this and it will show you your heart rate. So if I was wearing my watch, it would give me a continuous heart rate. Also some other information, including stress and calories burned. And also it has an activity here of your day, including floors climbed and calories burned. And also with sleep. At the very top, you have your personal information. Now, I'm just going to cover this very, very briefly. So, there is my name, and I have my Watch Up logo, so you can change these things. And here I did an activity the other day. Just want to show you what it looks like. And here you have these three circles. The first one is time, and then it's distance and calories. And it's also showing me a map. It gives me a very detailed map here and you can pinch to zoom and get very close to where you have been traveling. Moving on to menu four, there's also another way to communicate with the watch and this is using Garmin Express. And I have this also on the instructions with the links that take you to download either for the Mac or for Windows 10. So if you prefer to use the computer, then this is an option. Before I carry on, I would recommend that you download the instructions that I've written and use the instructions to follow this video. This will also be useful if you have just bought the Instinct or if you are deciding whether to buy one. This video will give you everything you'll need to know out of the box. On the bezel and also included on the display is written what each button actually does, which makes it very, very easy to use and also you will never forget. On my instructions, we're going to menu five and this is all about the menu. So by pushing the menu or the up button here for a few seconds will take you to that very menu. And notice at the top it's saying menu and here in the subdial it's showing the battery level. And using menu in ABC, the up and down button, you can use it either way. So here we have settings, history and back to watch face and any time you can press the GPS button, which is also select and start. So just opt for that. And this will give me some optional watch faces. I'm going to use the up and down buttons and select through. So this is the first one. And you have this one here. You have sort of a calendar type one. This one here is telling me what uh, my heart rate is up to. You can also just have a basic feature of an analog time like so. And also you can additionally add some new features. Now I'm just gonna show you the watch face that I have set up. And this is the one I've chosen because I like in the subdial, it's showing me battery, whether my phone is connected, uh, also showing me the alarm and also telling me when the watch is in a sleep mode or not do not disturb mode. It's also showing me the air pressure here, got the date, and it also tells me whether the air pressure is increase, increasing or decreasing. So by pressing select, I can customize this here. Note this window here, this subdial is flashing. And using the up and down, 
I can change this so I can have a moon phase I can even have sunset and sunrise time it can almost show me a second world time and so on and so on in even calories and even give you the weather here and I like to have all the information showing you got steps heart rate date and back to drive the battery or have everything and notice that you can also have the option if you want negative or a positive display so it will scroll through both styles so you can choose from so I'm just going to choose that one so once you're happy you just press uh, select and then it flashes on to the next one and again you can go through everything here and you can also change that one this one here and then it is ticked and it's back in home screen so from here you need to press the menu button to go back into the menu so next is your history this is quite an important one this one shows you all your activities which I've done and I have been really testing this watch out completely so if I just go to the one I did on Monday I went for nearly two hours I walked for 5.63 kilometers and just giving you a basic overview of what to expect you have some details and I can also have a look at the map just to give you a little brief understanding of what to expect it doesn't have the maps pre-installed but once you've done a um, a walk or a navigation like I've done you'll have something very similar to this so it gives you a nice little overview so from map you have time in zone this is all to do with your uh, health and fitness which I'm just going to scrape past because it's something that I'm more into the navigational side but having a watch like this it does make you aware of your fitness so it does have a positive side so this is the elevation through my journey so this is quite a nice overview I'm always pressing back to go back obviously and I can just choose to delete it and at any time you can just press the back button long press and it always take you to home screen now this is in factory settings and you can change this and I shall go through that a little bit later so let's get back in to the menu back into history and from activities you have your records and I have no records actually set or downloaded and I probably won't cover this in this video here and next is totals this gives you all your sort of running cycling swimming go back and options quite an important one because here you can delete all your activities you can reset your uh, totals and you can also uh, calibrate your true up as well which is I'm going to just cover the basics in this video so I won't go too crazy fall into depth of what this watch does otherwise this will be a five hour video next on my instructions is menu six and this is settings so just enter menu and there is settings and in my instructions just next to each one of these I've written what it briefly does so let's just have a quick little peek inside and what it looks like and notice that it comes up in the sub dial with this gear icon to let you know that you are in the settings so we have widgets and we have controls which I will cover very soon watch faces we've just done and here you have the sensors map and so on and this is the uh, settings menu and also here is where you can find about and you can get your uni ID number from and also you can show you the software update version next is menu 7 and this is system and system is quite a big part of this watch so we're gonna hit the menu go to settings can use the up button because I know that with playing around I know how to get to system quickly and here you have the language 
and you have time. Just select that. And here you can choose your time format. You have 24 hours, you can have 12, you can even have military time. So I'm selecting 24. You can also set the time, so you can do it auto or manually. And I prefer to have it auto so it syncs with my device. And also I can sync it with GPS, which I will come back to. Then you have alerts. You can also choose the option to alert you before sunset or sunrise. Maybe you want to get up and catch the best part of the day and go for that run or walk. Then this is the side you need. You can also set for an hourly signal. And here you can sync with GPS. And this is very quick and easy to do. So going back, next is the backlight. Have a quick look and here you can choose either between during an activity or not during an activity. Very, very simple. So during an activity, say I'm in a navigation, I can choose whether the keys are on. So when I press the keys, when the, uh, I get an alert, or maybe a gesture, and then there's a timeout of 15 seconds, and also you can adjust the brightness, and you'll also have this in the uh, not during activity, so if you just want to use the backlight through home time or something like this, and again, you have the same options. Next is sounds. Here you can choose if you want the beep on the key tones, uh, alert tones, so during an activity, or you can have vibration, so I prefer to have vibration on, and you can also opt to have key vibe as well, which is quite nice to see. And here is the do not disturb here, and this you can set either manually or you can set this through the app. So let's quickly go to the app and I shall explain this very briefly. So you open the app and you select the icon here with your instinct picture inside. And here we need to select user settings because this is personal to you. And here you can also just adjust some of your features. So here I've got my height, weight and so on. There's my birthday. I'll just leave it like that. And here we have sleep. Now, I have covered this in my menu, in well, in my instructions under menu 23 and 24, and this is about do not disturb. So basically, if you don't want any notifications or vibrations or tones, then these are between these hours here. So I've got mine from midnight till seven o'clock in the morning. Between those hours, this thing won't beep or vibe. So from sleep time going back, there is hotkeys. Now hotkeys I've covered in menu 21, just to show you what keys can do what. So let's just have a look and give you an idea. So this works in home screen. So if I was to hold the GPS button, this one here, I will get the mob. Now I'm not talking about gangsters. This is mob meaning man overboard. And I have covered this in the menu and I will go through this and show you how and what this does. So basically holding this down for a few seconds will start this mob. And going on to the next one. So if I was to hold back, this would take me to the widgets. Now this is a factory setting. So basically if you wanna go back to home screen, when it, wherever you are in the watch, just a long press on there for a few seconds does that job. So basically, you can just press start here and you can adjust it. So if I didn't want it to go back to the home screen, maybe I want it to take a lap or start a new navigation. Maybe it wants to take me to do some other little things I would like to have shortcuts to. You also have the option just to have it off. Now I have widgets, so I just select widgets. There it is, and it's just a matter of pressing the GPS, and that is set. You also have uh, dual buttons as well, so using the GPS and down, I've opted for this to 
lock and unlock the keys. You can also set this automatic as well, so you can automatically lock the keys and unlock them as well. So let's come out of the hotkeys and give you a demonstration of what it does. And I'm going to give you a demo on the mob and show you what that does. So when you're outdoors and say maybe you are on a boat and um, someone falls over and you need to mark that location quickly. Well, you just press, long press, a couple of seconds and get the GPS going. It will be very instant, if, especially if you're outdoors, and it will tag and mark that location. It will also give you a point bearing. And this you can use later, so you can stop the navigation. Now, the only way to stop it is by selecting back, and then you have the option of yes and no. And then, if you need to go back, you just have to go into the navigation and select mob, and it will take you back there. And it also gives you the distance you are from that point. Very useful indeed, and also useful for other um, features or ideas that you may have also. It's all very, very playable. From hotkeys going to auto lock, and I did briefly explain this, that I have got the GPS and the down button to uh, manually do this. So if we go in there, so you can either choose it, it's off, which I have chosen, you can have it on always, during activity or not during an activity. So let's give, me you, let's give you an example. So long press on back. So this is in home screen, pressing the GPS and the down button together, will lock and notice that it comes up with the padlock in the subdial and when I repeat that it shows the padlock opening that's very very cool from auto lock we have the units so you here you can change the distance so you can have kilometers or miles and this goes through the rest of that so you can have a elevation you can have that in meters you can have that in feet give you an example kilos you have kilos or pounds yes i'm from england and i work in kilos height is centimeters temperature you can also change that to fahrenheit and you also have your pressure as well you can adjust and so on. You can also have this vertical speed, which I have not really messed about with it. Feet per minute, feet per hours, and so on. So there is your units. Next is formats. Now I've covered format in my instructions under menu 22, and there's one particular format that you really do need to pay attention to. So I've highlighted this. So let's get into the format. So you have this pace and speed preference, and you have your start of the week. But the one I want to target on is this one here, the position format. So open this. And it's this one here where it says format. This is to do with your coordinates. And here I've got mine selected so I can understand the Google map coordinates. But you can also have this on these other settings here. And it also goes on and on. So here you might find that you are struggling to find the coordinates to enter in this watch. So here. This is where you need to be under format. So from format, you go on to data recording. So basically you just have two options. You're gonna either have it smart or every second. I just chose mine on smart. And here is USB mode. So basically every time when the USB cable is attached, you can choose it whether it just connects directly to the Garmin, just charging the battery, or to access the memory. And I have this just selected on that one. And it also comes up with an option to select. And I will cover this very, very briefly again later in the video with a, another menu that covers the screenshot. And here you have the reset for the watch. And here you can do 
the updates as well. The updates have to be all done through the Garmin Connect. This doesn't have a Wi-Fi connectivity. In my instructions under menu 28, I cover the screenshot and how to retrieve this from the watch. So I've got the hotkeys set up to take a screenshot using back button and the up button. So in any place in the watch, I can just press back and up and it will take a screenshot like so. So wait a few seconds and it will go back to the time mode. So now how do I retrieve this off? What I do is plug in my USB into my laptop and plug this straight into the back of the watch. You will have a menu where you can opt to either have it mass storage or you can just use it to charge the watch. So if I press yes, it will come up with a window like this and it is now connected. Now you need to look for the Garmin folder on your computer and once you've found this you need to open the file screenshot and it is spelt differently like S-C-R-N-S-H-O-T and here you'll find the BMP images and from there you can transfer it into your gallery or onto your desktop. Next on my instructions, we're going to menu eight, and this is the ABC mode. So in home screen, just a few seconds on the ABC takes you to this here. And this is showing me the compass. This is giving me the degrees and the subdial. And here, this is giving me the elevation as well. And I also have the uh, air pressure telling me whether it's going to go up or down. So it's all featured on the one display. But you can change this. You can either have a more of a basic compass. You can also calibrate the compass by selecting calibrate here. And if I press start, it will be prompting me to do the figure of eight motion. So it's very very ingenuitive indeed. Or you can have your air pressure here and it gives you what the current trend is here and it has a nice graph that lasts over a six hour period and here you have the altimeter and here the icon changes in the subdial, we have a little mountain and here you can just press select and you can calibrate this you can use GPS so you get it really, really accurate. You can also have the auto calibrate, which I have got switched on. So basically when I'm outside, it will automatically update, especially when I'm in navigation and I have the GPS running. And to exit the ABC mode is just pushing the back. As easy as that. Next, we're going to menu nine, and this is the widgets. So to enter the widgets, it's just a matter of pushing the menu button or the ABC or the up or the down. Just push it once and it will take you to your first widget. Now, these are the widgets that I have. So I have the weather and I keep coming back to this. The subdial gives you the now readings and I just love how that works. So we got the weather. I can also just press select and have more of an hourly. I can scroll down and I can have daily. I just push back and it goes back to the main display there on the weather. You can also have the sunrise and sunrise. It also gives you the twilight as well. And I love this icon here and it's actually working. You can actually see that does rotate in there. You can press select again and you can forward to a particular day or time of the month. So pressing back and it changes back to the negative. Notice that it went to positive and then back to negative. Next is the moon phase. And I love this moon phase. It's so, so cool. It also tells you the moon rise, moon set, and then it tells you what 
the position is on that moon. If I press select, I can skip, and I love this bit because it means I actually get to see the moon going through its different phases. That's so, so cool. Can do hours on that. Next, I have my temperature here, and this is over four hours. This is the minimum I had, and this is the maximum, and this is the current temperature. And also get a nice little graph, which is very, very cool indeed. And also I have my day. I can just select that and I can scroll down. So I haven't really worn this watch at all, so I'm not going to have any heart rate or anything else on there. So going back, it, again, it goes back to the negative. And here I've got my heart rate monitor. And then you go back to the time. So if I just press this, so I'll just give you an example. So if I do a long press of a few seconds on the menu while in the widget, I can go to the weather options and you'll have for each widget a different option. So here I can change a few little things. I can also have the recorder widget, which means I can select it into a different place so if I didn't want the weather next to the sunrise and I wanted it more to the moon phase then you can do it like so once you are happy to where you have it then just press the GPS start button and it will lay it there and we go back in you can also just remove the widget it won't delete it it just takes it off and here you can add widgets so you can have last sport just give you a brief run through so you could have these extra widgets if you desire. Next on my instructions is menu 10 and this is controls and this is operated in the home screen. So here it's written control, this is the light button, so just a short press on that and you have this display here and you can add and customize this to your preference. So let's give you an example, timers, just pressing start or the GPS button here, I can change the timer. So I've got this on five minutes. I can also go back and adjust the hours. I like that it has this subdial showing me the arrow so I can go forward. So once I've finished, it will have the tick. And I press tick and I can either just start, it's even given me the play icon, uh, or I can choose up and have some more options. So I could save this auto restart, auto restart, and I can choose whether I want some sound tones or just vibration. So you have some nice options there. So going back is here. So I just want to start the timer. I can also just do a quick reset on the down button here. It will just reset it and start counting again. And there you can just exit. And I like how it's shown that the timer is showing that is one is activated. So you think, well, have I just set that by accident or I'm not sure. You can also add a timer. How cool is that? So maybe I want one that's for 10 minutes, like so. And how about I have two timers going at once? So if I go back, it's now telling me I have two timers activated. So I'm just going to go in. There it is counting from 10 minutes. Here I'm going to stop that. I'll reset that so it's all ready for the next timer. I go back up. And there is the five minute timer. So I still have that one activated. So there's my quick timer. It's going. So I'm just going to stop that, reset that so it doesn't go off later and disturb my tutorial. Next is the alarm. And here you can add a multiple, multiple alarms. And it's basically the same. Uh, principle so we need to start the the alarm and get that set so it's on and we go in and here I can adjust the time so because I've got it in 24 hour format it's easier for me to understand otherwise it would come up with the AM and PM you can also choose if you want it off you can have it on daily weekdays weekends or you can just 
customize this so you can just pick the days you prefer. Very cool. And also who have the sounds as well. I, don't know if I just saw that. There you can choose the sounds. You can also choose if you want the backlight to come on and you can even have a little label, wake up, workout, reminder, and so on. Or you can just delete it like so. So if I wanted an add alarm, just say for instance, I wanted it like so, and it's on. So checking my status, yes, the alarm's on. And when I come back, it's showing me that the alarm is on. So I just go back in and select that off. And it is as easy as that. And I say you can just keep adding as many alarms as you wish. Next is the stopwatch. Just a simple 100 second of a stopwatch. And here I can just press the set button and this will be the lap. So here is lap one, lap two, lap three and so on. And I've taken this well over 100 just to see and it just kept going and going and going. I don't think it has a limit and here you can while it's playing you can push the down button and look at all the lap times so if I just stop that I can have some options or I can just reset it if I go for the options I can save this and it is now being saved and here it is done and I'm just going to show you very quickly so I go into menu and here was my history and my activities and here is my stopwatch just to show you how that works. It even shows me the laps in like this format. Very cool indeed. Stopwatch running time is also shown as well. So if I go into that I know I can just stop that and reset it and it's ready to go for my next time. Next I have added save location and here I've got alternative time zones. I've got Hong Kong at the moment but here you can just add as many up to four. So I just believe I'll just add that one there. You can also rename it as well and there it's done. So there's my two time zones. Go back next is we're going to the sunset and sunrise and i've got this set as a widget so just showing you examples also i could just select that and it's locked my keys and again i've just used the gps and the down button to open it up and i can press the control button there the light button I can also choose whether I want the do not disturb on a manual or a automatic and I can also adjust the backlight as well it's very cool I just want to if it's, don't want to disturb anyone with too much light there is an option there and here is where you can power off here is where I use find my phone and here is where it's connected it's telling me I can connect to the phone and we're back to the music. So if I did a long press while in the controls, I can add a control. So you have verb, and this is to do with the camera.
Carmen, stop recording. Uh, using the watch as a camera start stop, and also sync, altimeter, and so on. So you have quite a few little options is there as well. So you can also press the recorder controls and here you just select which one, say I want the music and I want to move it. So you just press this and it can be moved. Once you're happy with your positioning or your new location, just pressing the button like so and then just press back it will take you back out. And again, you can remove the controls. This won't delete them. It just takes them off. They also have history and settings always in that menu as well. So go back. So that is the controls covered. Next on my instructions, I want to now hit the navigational side and go into menu 26 on my instructions. I have pointed out a little issue that I came up with. Now, it's not an issue, but if you do see it happening, at least you'll know how to fix it and solve it. So basically when you're in navigation and you press start, a pause icon will come up. Now the reason why it comes up is because your walking speed or your traveling speed is set too high. So you either need to adjust this or you need to turn it off. And this is how you do it. So basically from the home screen, we go into the menu, and go to settings, activities and apps, then you go into your navigate. And now this will also work through the track me walk or whatever ones you have included. And I will come back to this very soon. So we're just going to select navigate, then you go navigate settings. And from here, I need to go for auto pause and there is my problem. I've got mine set at seven kilometers an hour. So if I'm walking at only five kilometers an hour, the pause icon will come up. Now you do have an option. You can also choose when you have stopped or in my case, I like to just not have this on. So next time I press play or start navigation, that pause icon will no longer be shown. Okay, next on my instructions, again, keeping to navigation, is menu 16. Now, this is how I can set this up using a manual input. I've also, later on in the video, will explain how you can do this all via another app and make it very easy. And using Google Maps as an example, I've just gone to my local park and I'm just going to show you how this is done. So you just a long press on where you want to know and I'm sure you're aware of this. Now you have this bar here, you just tap on that and it comes up like this and it gives you some information. Now if you scroll a little bit more further, it always gives you, just bring that into shot, it always gives you your coordinate here. Now this is the one I want to enter in the watch. I'm gonna take one point there, I will take one point here, one point there, and go back there. So I have one, two, three, and four coordinates, and I will enter this in the watch and show you what it will draw out. So here are the coordinates that I've written down, and this is exactly the format that is on Google Maps. So that was the start location, that was the second point, that was the third point, and then the fourth point will be back to this here. So let me show you how this is put into the Garmin Instinct. You press navigation, you have navigate, and here at the bottom, you have your coordinates. So you select your coordinates. Now I'm gonna give you a little example and show you how this works. Pressing GPS will push the pointer forward and you can also go back as well. So I'm going to enter all the digits in here and I just wanna sort of fast forward to this point here. Now this has lots of zeros here and on my particular input, it has a minus. Well, if you just leave the zeros as they are, that would be the minus part. 
So from here, I just press the GPS button and it will go to done. So I press done and you'll have this screen here. Now, if you look on menu 16, you'll see that I've included little pictures or little screenshots. So from here, I go back, I go to navigate. Now, if I go down to saved locations, it will come up with this one here. So if I just select that, and here is where I need to rename it. And using the up and down, down, you have this sort of scroll thing here. I love how that subdial works. So basically, if I wanted to refresh, I just go on to the delete one here. So I'm going to rename this park just to find it easier and show you. So P and this isn't too bad to use. It's quite... Um, it's quite easy uh, you get better at it and being that I'm dyslexic it is quite hard to do this on camera so what I'm going to do um, the first coordinate I'm going to set as park the next one I'll do park 2 and then park 3 so once you are happy and you can also change this from caps you can also put this on numbers and you can also have so have characters so once you are finished you select the tick and now it is named it as the park. You can also change the icon if you choose. You've got outdoors. I like how the sub oh, again is changing when you are selecting. This is something that is not featured on the Phoenix 5X Plus, and that would have been a very cool feature to have. So anyway, I'm just going to leave it blank. So if I came back out, my save locations are all gonna be here. So I'm going to enter the other two coordinates, and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm just on the last uh, coordinate now. And I'm just wanted to show you that if I do select the numbers, it shows like so. So this one is now going to be park three. So once I save that and come back out here. Now here we go. So that's my starting point, the park, park two, park three. And ignore woods, that is for something that I marked uh, later or earlier on in, in the week. So now I need to go back to navigate, just starting it from the start so you know where to follow. And here is the one called courses. Now I can create a course, I can give it a name. Now I'm just going to keep it simple and just call it course one, as you know how that works. Add location. Now I can use my current location or I can go to my save locations. So I'm going to start from park, add a location, save location, park two. And you are getting the idea. So um, park three and save my location. I need to come back on myself. So I need to select park. So that is all done. Press done, it's now loading up. Now I can go and do the course, but let's go and have a look at the map. How did that draw it out? And there it is. It's drawn the triangle. And you have the plus and minus here, so you can zoom out and zoom in, like so. There was a perfect little uh, triangle there. If I press the GPS button once, you'll notice that the icons on here change. This is very similar to like on the Phoenix 5X Plus. You can use the up and down like so. Pressing again, you can go left and right. Pressing the third time, you can actually go in and out. So that is perfect. And then by pressing back, we'll just take you back here. You can also uh, look at your version. You can also rename it, edit it and delete it. So I just wanted to start the course, and there it is. I've also got a GPS in my light box. So let's start it. So that would be my arrow telling me where I need to go. And it is pointing in the right location because I'm 
not at the starting point on the triangle. So it's basically going to lead me to where I need to go. So I need to go 394 meters to I'm there. This gives me my heart rate and I also have a little display like so. Last lap, last time. So you can take some lap recordings just by pressing the back button. And you can take as many of these as you like. And going back to your elevation there and back to your map. Then I just press stop. And then I will get an option. So I can either resume for later, I can just save it, or I can do another lap back to start, or I can just delete it. So I'll just save it for now. And that is saved. So I haven't done anything, zero kilometers. So if I go back into the menu and look at my history there, in my activities is today and that is recorded and notice that the icon is now showing me a navigation icon I can also just scroll down see where the icon in the subdial is showing me stopwatch and that is a sort of a navigation as well that is called track me and it is very very easy to follow. Now I'm going to show you an easy way of planning a route and this is using Garmin Explore, the app. It's a free app available through Android and iOS. So basically go into my instructions, menu 17, and again I've done it all for you guys and made it very easy. So you open the app and you have to enter all your information, your password. You have to set it up to Garmin Connect. It is so, so easy. I don't need to do a tutorial on that. But so, when you open the app, sometimes you might have a blank or it seems that you've got no map. Well, you're going to need to just download the map in, well, basically I'm in England, so you need to download the English map or wherever you are. And so far it has been free to use. But upon other occasions after I've downloaded the maps, I find that I'm actually got a blank screen. I start to worry, thinking I need to download more apps. Basically, it started off in the middle of the sea. So what you need to do is just push this icon here, this arrow here, this navigation, and it will always take you back. So I just want to just quickly show you that on the map I have this blue thing here. Now I didn't realize this but I went on a little tour uh, a couple of days ago and when I came back it synced this automatically to the Garmin Explore as well as on Garmin Connect. Now I thought that was super cool. Anyway, let's just sort of get on with it and I shall explain things as I go along. This is a very, very simple app, I would say. Very, very uh, easy to use. So this is the park I wanna choose. So I just tap on the plus add route um, icon there. So I just get my map a little bit more in position. So I wanna start off there. That's my first point. Again, I'm gonna do my triangle and then I can point back down there and then back to start. I can also edit, delete and some other things down here. So you really need to have a good play around with it. So here I'm going to save this. And I also have the option, again, I've put all this in the instructions. You can also change things as well. So it's all there. So that is saved and that is done. So what I need to do now, I need to come back out and go to the library here at the bottom and I need to make a new collection. Now I'm going to call this course. I hope I spell this correctly. I'm going to call this course, oh, course one and press OK. Now down the bottom here is my course. I press course and here I can add. So I go here and I've got my root. Click on that, that added and it is at the top here, add. And now if I was to go to my root, 
my course it is showing me here it can also show you some other things as well so really need a little bit of a play around with it but this is sort of basically what you do and then you go to your device i just want to show you something before i sync that you can go to the library now here you have a list of the things that you might have added and here is the one i've added today the root i like to say that you can tap on this and give that its own name so i'm going to call it course one as well just to give you an example and then we're just going to press there it's saved it is now done so now if i go back to the uh, devices and I'll press instinct here it's got course one here so if i just tap on that that is now ready to sync and you now it's coming up here and it will start telling me that it is being downloaded to the watch so just going to let that play through and then we're going to have a look on the garmin instinct to see what is happening on there by selecting the, the gps goes to navigate press navigate and then it's just a matter of selecting courses and there it is course one open that and let's have a look at the map and there it is with the triangle how cool is that so i can do the course in reverse as well and i can again rename it as and edit and so on so do course i've got a gps and let's go right moving on and on to the last 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 thing on this video is sight and go and why have i included that well if you're in the compass and you want to take a compass bearing you're not able to do it in this way but if you go to navigate and you go to sight and go here you can open up you'll get the compass now you line up to exactly where you want to go and you just press the gps button and i have a gps going press again and it will start and it will always tell me to go in that location it's very very cool Ooh, also tells you if you're off course as well and i thought that was a very cool feature to include in my instructions as i said in the beginning of this video i will be doing follow-up tutorials so just bear with me because i also have the phoenix 5x plus that i need to do further tutorials and this is all to do with the navigational side anyway i hope this helps and with along with my instructions and as always that is the time thanks for watching